Hi guys, Paul Seals here from Conscious Investor Network. Very fortunate to be joined by Tommy Honan, the Head of Partnerships at uh, SwiftX. Hi Tommy, how are you going? Good day, Paul, how are you doing, Matt? Nice to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you as well. So thanks for joining us. Um, we're gonna be covering off some of the ba basics before we sort of talk about the market and that sort of thing. I mean, I've had a very interesting uh, journey in, in cryptocurrency. Can I just ask you, like, when was the beginnings for you? When, when, was, when did you stumble across the 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 um the cryptocurrency and and what what was possible with that yeah um i think i had a, I had a pretty interesting journey into crypto i've been in kind of financial markets all my life kind of a self-taught investor um from from back in the days when i was living in ireland um yeah i found cryptocurrency in 2013 um kind of around the, the time it, it kicked off i guess basically into the mainstream started to get a bit bit of noise um and i kind of dived into it quite skeptical at first um but yeah that was that was when i started 2013 2014 i think i made my my first investment in, in 2014. Mm, wow 2014 so you've seen a bit of growth in the market that's happened it's evolved certainly during that period of time and i guess the majority of people that are getting started uh at the moment we'll sort of want to know like fundamentally how do you want to ask you like what is cryptocurrency how do you how do you describe that yeah it's a question i guess it comes up quite a lot um you know people are quite unfamiliar to what what it actually does where is the value in it there's a lot of questions like this that come up and um you know we get we get better answers every year um as crypto moves more further and further into the mainstream um, you know, there's a lot of use cases coming up for cryptocurrency, but I guess to break it down for people, crypto is, um, you know, it's a digital currency. So not too dissimilar to what you, you actually see in your, in your bank account as dollars when you log into your, your mobile app, uh, Commonwealth Bank or whoever bank you're with, you know, you see digital numbers on a screen. Cryptocurrency is, is very similar in, to, in the way that you can view it like that. But basically what, what crypto is, is um, runs on a separate payment network. Uh, called blockchain, uh, and basically that, that it's a digital currency. Um, you know, it can be used to to buy goods and services, the same as your your money in your bank. Um, cryptocurrency being digital on the ledger, it it, it runs across um, it runs across this blockchain network, which basically means it's decentralized, which which in turn means it's it's breaks away from those traditional banking um, banking traits, like being centralized, meaning the banks can you know, put a stop to your money at any time. Cryptocurrency being decentralized means that, that you are in full, full control. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the common question that most people that haven't had experience with cryptocurrency ask at first is like, who created cryptocurrency? Who created Bitcoin? Yeah, it's... Um, I think I think uh, it's uh, it's one of those another one of those questions that, that gets bounced around quite a bit because um, there's probably no clear answer to exactly who created Bitcoin. Bitcoin being um, you know the inception, the first cryptocurrency. It's the most popular. It's the one that everybody knows about. Um, I guess the the story that goes is it's that uh, the person's name is called is Satoshi Nakamoto. That's the the name or the pseudonym that's that's associated with the with the creator being the creator of Bitcoin, first cryptocurrency, um, and it is that it is that name that that is um, associated also with you know the the uh, writing the first white paper on Bitcoin, which is basically an explanation of exactly how um, Bitcoin works and, and and its purpose and, and what it's used for. Um, I guess further on to that. Um, Nobody really knows exactly who it is. Um, it could be one person. It could be a group of people. Um, the person that that is associated with creating it, or I, as I mentioned, the group of people, um, were very active around the you know 2008, 2009, 2010 um, creation era. Um, but but pretty much that that name that is associated with Satoshi Nakamoto has uh, has pretty much gone silent since December 2010. So basically what that means is, as of right now, nobody knows exactly who created Bitcoin, but nobody knows exactly who created the first cryptocurrency. And that, that in itself can be quite powerful. Um, unlike a business or a payment network, you know, like um, Google, Apple, 
Amazon, uh, PayPal, for instance. You know, there's there's an owner, there's a company associated, which means government can come in, they can regulate, they can shut down companies. Whereas Bitcoin is decentralized. Nobody knows who owns it. It can't technically it can't be shut down by regulators, which is you know quite an empowering thing. So mm. yeah, I guess that that all plays into it plays into um, Bitcoin and, and the power of Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess some people also have concerns as well about you know what's what's possible if uh, if uh, the the cryptography can actually be hacked by quantum computing and that sort of thing at some point in time. You know, the, the concern that it has a limited shelf life. Yeah, it's um, it's it's one that, that that throws a it's a question as well that comes up quite a lot. But it's I guess it's um, Bitcoin is 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 you know it's not just one payment system. It's not just one uh, entity that people are working on. It's, it's, it's a network. So what that means is you have people from every corner of the globe working to secure the Bitcoin network. It takes, it takes hours, days, weeks, months, years to, uh, to mine Bitcoin. So that's basically what that, what that breaks comes down to is the power of the network. That network effect um, in crypto means that it's just going to be. It's just going to grow on its power. The computers that they mentioned are needed to, you know, solve the Bitcoin equation and hack the network. Basically, need to need to grow with Bitcoin, and at the at the current rate, that 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 is impossible. So, in turn, I think that's a pretty low risk item for, um, you know, your argument against Bitcoin or its weaknesses. Um, I definitely see the quantum computing argument as a, a bit of a more low risk one, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's interesting as well. I was just going to ask you too further, like um, people the, the people normally ask the question, like, is it backed of anything by value? I don't see any point of buying anything if it, it's not backed by value. Yeah, um, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, you asked me that question. What, what's, you know, what's your, what's your fiat money backed by? Um, fiat money is, is, uh, is only backed by the government. Um, that that says what its what its value is, right? Um, so I mean, you know, there's a lot of concerns around uh, money printing, inflation. Inflation is a big reason that people actually start to learn about crypto. People start to want to invest in crypto. They want a, a harder form of money. You know, I think the current inflation rate in Australia is about six or seven percent a year. Um, you know, for people that don't understand inflation, basically what that means is, you know, every every year you're losing six or seven percent of your buying power from the money that's sitting in the bank. Um, is Bitcoin backed by anything of value? It's technically the underlying asset. It, it gets its value from people, uh, speculators, people that say it is valuable, but also it has some clear um, attributes that, that do make it valuable. Now, it's quite hard to mine. It's quite hard to get. Um, it's quite hard to um, you know, basically get your get a hold of it. Um, it has scarcity. There's only ever going to be 21 million bitcoins in, in the world uh, mined, um, and it, it also has a lot of the attributes that uh, money we use today have. Uh, apart from that centralized manner, which which gives it most of the power. Um, I guess um, you know when you look at when you talk about inflation, you talk about um, protection of wealth. Bitcoin is definitely seen as one of those assets um, and cryptos in general. I, I talk about Bitcoin because it's the number one and it's the one that people know about. Yeah. Um, cryptocurrencies in general these days are seen as um, a store of value um, aside from, you know, just holding money in the bank. So I guess people, you know, people are um, people are definitely speculating uh, at this point every year. That, uh, that crypto lives, it gets stronger and stronger, and we see higher prices in the markets year on year. Uh, you know, ever since Bitcoin uh, was launched back in 2009, uh, 2008, 2009, it, um, it's just grown in value over time, and anyone that has invested in it early on has, has obviously done, done really well. Um, so I think, you know, um, the argument about it being backed by anything, uh, I mean, it, it takes computational, com computational power to mine Bitcoin, which is essentially energy, which costs money, which needs to be there. So um, yeah, it's, it, it is not backed by um, assets in the traditional sense, but it definitely has value. And um, you know, there's, you, could, you could talk about where, where Bitcoin's value is, isn't all day. It really is, um, it's about educating yourself on, on the, um, 
the reasons why it has value versus the reason why the money in your bank account has value. Mm. Mm. It's interesting you mentioned about mining there as well, because um, some people sort of talk have been talking about the volatility of the market based on the recent remarks about people like Elon Musk and that sort of thing, making comments about uh, cryptocurrency and that sort of thing. Well, two parts really. One's about the, the cryptocurrency and the volatility and that the other part, so he was saying that it's not very environmentally sustainable to that effect or something along the lines to that effect. Um, I'm just wondering if you can like just mention yeah. it. Yeah. Sure, sure. It's, um, it's uh it's a it's an argument that has came up recently, um, and it seems to have been a little bit of a catalyst for crypto having a, a little bit of a pullback. I mean, we've seen Bitcoin around the sixty thousand USD mark um, before the this recent events, uh, this recent news came out. Um, I mean, that is definitely not the reason, in our opinion, that uh, crypto had a pullback. It was it was definitely due for a market correction. It's very healthy. It's a very good sign of the market. Um, the Elon Musk comments on on energy, um, somewhat accurate, I would say, but definitely not to the scale or the extent that it has been um, blown out in the in the in the mainstream media. I guess, uh, Paul. Um, I think you know, even that. I think that was a couple of weeks back that that news came out. But even since then, there has been kind of counter studies to prove that a lot of the uh, a lot of Bitcoin mining power actually comes from renewable energy. Uh, I'm not I'm not 100 on the figure, but I think it's in the high 50s in percentage that comes from actual uh, renewable energy. So you know things like uh, thermogenic power, um, wind power, uh, solar power, all these kind of uh, renewable energies. Um, I mean, Bitcoin itself and the people that work in Bitcoin are definitely yeah, committed to uh, a sustainable future for Bitcoin. And um, I I just seen that that number growing growing over time. Um, I mean, it's a good mainstream media um, headline that Bitcoin uses too much power. But uh, I think you know, once once all is said and done, the truth generally comes out. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely not. Uh, it doesn't have much legs when we get to break it down. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the next thing as well. I mean, I know you've got an offer for some of our listeners uh, and and uh, viewers that might be watching as well. But um, the first thing is getting started. How 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 fast is it to get started into the cryptocurrency space? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're really lucky um, at the moment. I mean, we're, we're based in Brisbane, Australia. We're really lucky uh, people in Australia at the moment. Um, we've got local exchange platforms similar to ours, um, SwiftX. Um, I mean, you can get your accounts set up um, in three to five minutes. That's, um, you know, set up your account, verified, ready to deposit. So in the next five minutes after that, you can deposit money from your bank and buy crypto. All in all, we've seen the experience for, for first time users to take about 15 to 20 minutes from you getting your account set up to getting the money in and buying crypto. So, you know, it is, it's a really quick process. Um, and, you know, that, that was not all, always the case. There, was, there has been a lot of problems down through the years with people getting their accounts verified. SwiftX, I guess, has came in and we've, we've tried to really work on that. Um, we're a very customer centric company. So we try to you know, put the customer first as, as best we can and suit their, to suit their needs and just make it as easy to use and streamline as possible. So yeah, I guess these days it's, it's really quick and easy. Um, one, of the, one of the most important points uh, people like to know as well as when they're getting started is you know, it's great getting money in. All these platforms, it's easy to get money in, but how do I get my money out? So we, we actually run across the OSCO and NPP network um, nowadays. So okay. what that means is, you know, you, you can get your funds in in five minutes. You can get your funds out in five minutes, which is really, really important. So um, SwiftX is one of the only businesses to currently support the, uh, the full OSCO NPP uh, payment network as well. So, um, you know, if your account is OSCO enabled, it's going to be you know, really, really quick and really easy if you get your money in and out. Okay. What's that the acronym for, Tommy? Uh, Pardon? That that system that you mentioned, the OSCO. Uh, it's, it, what what which one is that Paul? Yeah, that's that's the banking system for in, for for exiting and and uh, for depositing and withdrawing funds. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's the NPP is the it's a new new payments platform. Okay. So it's so it's um, yeah. So that's so that you can you can you can search that one yourself. 
Um, yeah, the new payments platform is is uh, it's relatively new in Australia. Um, some of the major banks do support it now, not all of them. Um, but basically, if your account is set up and enabled for for um, for those payments across that network, um, yeah, it's it's it takes seconds. I think one of the most recent withdrawal um, provisions that I had made on my own account, it took me maybe 15 seconds from when I pressed the button on my SwiftX account to getting the funds on my on my app on my phone to uh, you know money in the bank ready ready to go so mm. that's quite empowering it, it used to take days um, to do these kind of things whereas you know thankfully 2021 things are a lot uh, a lot faster a lot easier yeah. and um, yeah that just shows progress I guess in in the industry as well mm. fantastic Tommy so the thing is uh, the next thing that the people have concerns about it really is about privacy they've heard things about you know, uh, losing funds from exchanges and that sort of thing. So, uh, where, where are the? So they're they're on your exchange. They've got the funds. Um, they've got their cryptocurrency on there. Where is the cryptocurrency stored, and how secure is it? Yeah, I mean, um, crypto. That's always a question that comes comes about as well with crypto. Is you know where where is it stored? Um, what are the processes behind it? How how safe is an exchange? I mean. SwiftX has kind of come about to solve all of these problems. Um, we've got, you know, multiple security layers that run across SwiftX. Um, Paul, we use um, biometric logins. We use two-factor authentication, uh, which is basically a separate app on your phone that authenticates. So, so nobody that doesn't have their your mobile phone in their hands can actually access the system. Um, in terms of the crypto itself. We, we hold it in a, in a multitude of um, online and offline secure wallets that are um, held in what we call multi-sig wallets, multi-signature wallets. Basically what that means is no one person at SwiftX can even get access to all of the funds. So it takes multiple people from our management team to actually access it. So it just, it just adds a bit more complexity to the uh, moving of assets for us, but we, from a customer's perspective, really streamlined, really easy, and as secure as you can in the industry at the moment. Um, obviously, as well, um, a big factor of our business, you know, being based in Brisbane, we've got, you know, local support for people. Um, if you need somebody on the phone, you can call somebody from SwiftX, which we were the first exchange globally to offer that service for free, um, which is which is, which is is pretty good. Um, and then also, um, just back on the security stuff, um, we use another company called Auth0, who are um, basically a cloud security platform, which is um, yeah globally recognized. Um, they've never had any security breaches uh, to date. Uh, they've been around in the industry, I think, for 10 or 12 years. Um, and uh, yeah, SwiftX itself never have any hacks. We've never had any compromises, never any issues with, with security whatsoever. So, you know, that's really pleasing. And um, yeah, I guess it just pays into the kind of um, the values that we have in SwiftX, it's definitely security and customer first over, over pretty much everything else. Yeah. So I just want to check as well, and we'll, we'll give a link for people to be able to join, and there's going to be a bonus um, um, offer there for people as well. But the first, the first question that people normally ask is like, what, because there's like, how many cryptos are in the market now? I mean, there was like 1,500 or something last time I looked. How many, how many does, does SwiftX um, have on its exchange? Yeah, I think there's um, there's about there's over eight thousand no Paul crypto, <laughs> which is yeah, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of those cryptos are um, you haven't really been properly vetted, I would say, to put it to put it very mildly. Um, you know, and there there are risks with crypto, and and uh, I think a lot of people are are learning that. And, um, people like yourself, um, we're here, and myself, we're here to um, educate people on on the risks and. And, and try and help people to uh, to understand, you know, you're using a reputable platform. There's a good chance the, these guys have done their due diligence. Um, we've got 260 assets currently listed on SwiftX. So um, we're up there with the most um, assets listed for, you know, for Australian users. Um, basically, we have a full uh, compliance and coin betting system that we have to go through for any assets to be listed. Mm. That then has to be um, signed off by our security team as well. Um, what we what we look for in assets, um, you know, we, we don't look at them as an investment. We just look at it how are they going to be secure for our customers to use. Um, for us, it's not about the investment. It's about 
whether or not the project is solid. Um, so anything that you see listed on SwiftX is going to be heavily vetted anyway. So you know that's really important to us. We don't want to provide our users with any assets that have potential to you know fail or, or, or disappear or anything like that. So that's that's why we go through this strenuous vetting system. Yeah. And then the next question is that primarily with clients and that sort of thing as well, they just asked Tommy, it's like, you know, which crypto do I buy? If there's, how many did you say 260 on your exchange? It's like, you know, where do yeah. they start? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I've been involved in the space since 2017 as well and sort of came in and out of the market as it's evolved. But uh, it, it's, a, it's a, probably the most common question is like, where do I start? What do I buy? Yeah. Um... I guess us being a cryptocurrency exchange, we we definitely stay away from advising clients on what to buy. Um, but we're more than happy to educate people on where to start, think best things to do when they're looking for an asset. Um, there's a lot of considerations to take in. I'm sure, Paul, you're aware. Um, you know, it depends on the type of investor somebody is. It depends on their age sometimes makes a difference. You know, are they in it for the long term? Are they looking for a short term kind of fix? Um, it really, really comes down to the type of investor. But a lot of, a lot of the, um, I guess, the common um, traits that that we tell people to look for in assets is, you know, do they have a limited supply? Which means, you know, can they just print them out of thin air whenever they want? Similar to our current. Um, fiat system, current uh, Australian dollar, US dollar system. Yes. Um, you don't want that. <laughs> um, so basically, cryptos with a limited supply are definitely seen as, as more valuable and ones that can stand up in, more in the long term. Um, you want to look for who built it, um, what's their community like, do they have a big support? Um, I mean, recently in the news, people are talking about um, XRP, Ripple, um, you know, they've got a massive community, for instance, they've been around for a long time. Um, basically, just it just shows the power of a community for an asset that, that can actually be fundamentally sound in itself. Um, after that, again, you want to look at the team that created it. You want to kind of vet them as, as best you can. I, I actually really like using the likes of LinkedIn and, and systems like this to you know, check out if the team are secure, what are their qualifications. Um, there's a bit of a process that, that I generally go through if I'm looking for um, looking for an asset to, to, to invest in. Um, you got to look at the technology. Biggest one for me, are, are they actually solving a real uh, real world problem yeah. or are they just another, uh, another kind to kind of add to the list? And uh, that's, that's, generally, um, that's generally a good indication of, of whether something is, is going to stand up long term. Um, yeah, and then I guess the other few little things to, to kind of sign off in is, um, you know, how long has it been around for? Has it had um, relative price action in the past? As in, has it been through a market cycle already? Um, because you can go back and you can look at the charts, you know, without being experienced, you don't need to be a really experienced investor to do this. You can go back and have a look at, at a chart of an asset and you can look, you know, all right, has it had a big spike? Has it had its run up yet? Um, is it just about to start? Is it a new project? So all these kind of things are considerations that, that need to happen for you, um, you know, before you select an asset. It's hard enough to make money in this in this world, uh, Paul. You, you really don't want to be thrown it away on something without, you know, at least doing a little bit of your own due diligence um, on top of everything else that you know the likes of SwiftX as an exchange do as well. Mm, absolutely. And some of the I remember some of the purists there. They were like they'd sold up everything and they were all in the market. But the other question that we sort of get from clients, I know preemptively you probably won't, won't be able to answer it, but they're, they're sort of saying what sort of percentage of their portfolio should perhaps be in crypto to diversify. We sort of say generally as a rule, maybe between not that we, you know, we're more about strategy as well, but, you know, maybe 5%, 5 to 10% of their portfolio or something along those lines. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it, um, again, it comes back to what type of investor you are and, um, you know, age again comes into it. Um, you know, we see a lot of uh, people using their self-managed super funds these days um, as a way to access. Like a, it's like a hedge against anything else. Like having a, mm. an investment stock, crypto is seen as just um, another hedge against against um, anything else you might be investing in. Um, you want to have as, as balanced of a portfolio as possible. In terms of actual percentages, I guess yeah, I, I wouldn't put an actual number on it because it really is specific to that individual call. I think. Um, but, you know, in saying that, we, you know, we see a lot of people, um, if they're younger, 
using say self-managed super funds they're happy to use um say bitcoin and some of the top cryptocurrencies um, they're happy to have those in their portfolios a little bit more more of a percentage in in bitcoin if they're if they're younger um as you get older i mean that percent will definitely be uh dropping down a bit because you know it is quite volatile we're all fully aware that it's volatile um People with the longer term outlook, and if you know if they're happy to, to hold on for that five, 10 year period. Um, I mean, historically, people have have made money on it. It's done really well for them over time. So yeah. definitely that longer term outlook. And, and me personally, for for cryptos, it's a longer term outlook. It's not, you know, what it's gonna do this week, what it's gonna do next week. It's really um, you know, that five to ten year time period. Yes. I mean, we've been talking to people about Bitcoin since way back since it was about, I don't know, maybe about $5,000 or something. What's what's the current pricing? Where is it at, at the moment as far as uh, you said nearly, was it 50 or something? Where, where is uh, 46 or something? I might think, think last time I looked at it. Yeah. Yeah. 40, 46, um, 46 AUD. I think it's uh, 34, 33 mm. um, US dollars at the moment. So, mm. you know, from a high of 64 and a half thousand US dollars, um, you know, two months ago, we've had a, a pretty healthy correction. Like I mentioned earlier on, it's it's definitely something that the market needed. We've had we had close to um, I think 15 months or so of 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 up up market, um, yeah. which you know, long term isn't sustain, sustainable. Um, it's seen a lot of interest driven into the market. Um, you know, crypto is 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 on a lot of people's minds at the moment, which is which is really good for adoption. Mm. Um, for me, it's just like any other investment. You have to treat it as it is. It it comes in cycles. It 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 will go down again. It'll go up again. That's just the way markets work. And and if 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 they weren't working like that, you're you probably have to worry about it. So yeah, um, yeah. In terms of where it is right now, um, I do I do uh, I do some studies on on uh, on chain analytics. I won't get too deep into it, but essentially what that means is uh, how many uh, crypto wallets are getting set up. What are the big fish doing? Um, how many cryptos are being held on exchanges? What balances? Um, and you know what we're seeing is with this recent market correction, we're seeing a lot of the bigger investors, your high net worth individuals, your 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 smarter money, as they generally call it, um, are buying up um, good good lots of of cryptocurrencies, different cryptocurrencies in the top market caps um, in these current market conditions, which is yeah, you know, it's quite pleasing. Yeah. That's great, Tommy. Is it what other sort of questions do you find that you're getting from people that are, that are entering the market that that are normally directed to yourself and your team? Yeah, I guess I guess people are um, people are quite um, interested to know, um, you know, the longevity of crypto. Is it is it just a fad? Is what you you often hear. I mean, the mainstream media will often um, talk about cryptocurrencies when they're when they correct or when there's a market correction when it's on the way down but um for the year the year prior to that they don't mention that it's gone from you know like you mentioned with bitcoin it went from three thousand us dollars to sixty four thousand in in, uh, in 15 months mm. but they don't like to talk about that so um yeah we we hear a lot of we get a lot of questions coming through around that a lot of stuff about security which i touched on earlier um a lot of it is is peace of mind in the platform that they use um some people, um, you know, there's a lot of um, attractive offerings from from overseas uh, competitors of ours and, and other companies within Australia. Um, a big thing for investors is, can I trust the company that I'm that I'm putting my money into? Are they regulated? Um, can I talk to them on the phone? And I guess that's that's a big plus point for for SwiftX and, and us as a business is, you know, we're very accessible. We're in Australia. We're we're ready to have a talk. I mean. Me and you, Paul, we've we've met recently as well. You know, we're we're real people. We're not just um, you know numbers behind a screen, and uh, that's very very important for people having being able to put a face to a name and, and having that accessibility. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you, you know, we we're sending our clients to you, and uh, you've been exceptional with your service, your yours and your team service for our clients. So it's been great. And you, so you've got an offer for anyone that wanting wants to come on board with SwiftX for cryptocurrency, Tommy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we've got a we've got an intro um, offer for for new, your new customers, Paul, or anyone coming through, um, of a, a twenty dollar uh, Bitcoin credited to their account once they once they get their verification complete. So so basically, anyone that comes through the the link, Paul, that you'll have there, will uh, will get twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin 
credited directly into their account. Nothing to do, that will go in automatically once they uh, complete their verification. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're more than happy to, to offer that. And um, I guess the big, the big part of that is as well as where, you know, we're available. If there's any questions, you can come through on our live support or our help, or we, you'll be able to give us a call and, and schedule a call back to uh, for any ex, ex, extra um, help you may need. Mm, fantastic, Tommy. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll post the link in here for that so people can get onboarded and get the $20 worth of Bitcoin to get started. That's very generous, Tommy. We appreciate that. And we're going to do some uh, regular updates with you guys as well, just to check in how the market's going from week to week and time to time to keep people informed about what's happening as well. So thank you very much for for, for uh, the link and the generous uh, being generous with the Bitcoin and also for your time today, Tommy. No problem at all, Paul. Pleasure. Okay, great. Tommy Honan, thank you for joining us.